Yo, yo, welcome to lesson 37. One of the most frustrating things is making changes to a file and forgetting to hit save. Luckily, now that many apps are on the cloud, we get autosave for free. Today, we're going to learn how to save our apps with local storage. Local storage allows us to save key value pairs in the browser, aka a dictionary. We have access to the local storage through the local storage variable. Here are four functions that we can use with the local storage. We can use the set item function to store a key value pair. For example, we can use the key name to store the value Vincent. Then if we want to retrieve the value, all we have to do is dot get item, and then we give the name of the key. In this case, it's name. And just a pro tip, you should always write an if statement to check whether you got back a value from get item. And basically, if you get a null value back, that just means a value does not exist for the given key. And basically, you should handle what your app should do based on this scenario. And you can remove a key by just doing dot remove item and then passing the name of the key. So in this case, it's name. And also, if you want to clear the whole storage, all you have to do is dot clear. And this will delete all the key value pairs inside the local storage. Cool. Now let's run through a simple example together. I created a simple app that just has a counter and a button that adds the counter. The code is super simple. We have a variable to keep track of the counter. And when you click the button, it will just add one to the counter and refresh the UI where basically the text gets updated. Now, if we want to add local storage to this, it's very simple. After we add one to the counter, we should store this inside our local storage. So we can do local storage dot set item and let's give it the key counter and let's give it the value of the counter. Cool. Now let's click run and let's see what happens. Uh, let's add to the counter and now let's click run again. Hmm. It looks like the value didn't get saved. We can double check this by going to the console. So right click and hit inspect and drag this window and go to application. Go to storage, local storage, and on Replit, the link to the project looks like gibberish, but this is the one. So click it. And here you can see the key counter has the value six, but for some reason, we're seeing zero here. Do you want to take a guess why this value is zero and not six? The answer is very simple. We saved the value of the counter, but we never used it. So when we open this app, we should check whether the key counter has a value. So in the case where the value does not exist, we can just set our counter to zero. And if a value exists, we should get the value from the local storage and set it to our counter. And we can simplify this logic by creating a variable to store the value we get back from the local storage. And we can use this value here and also here. You don't have to do this at all, but it just makes our code a lot easier to read. Anyways, let's run our code. And cool, let's click our counter. Wait, that looks weird. Why is one getting added to six? So basically the local storage stores values as a string. So when we saw six earlier in the console, it was actually six as a string. And now when we add one, we're basically appending one to the end of the string. And our problem can be solved very easily by just parsing the value we get back from the local storage. And finally, we have to call refresh UI to update the UI. So now let's click run. That looks great. It looks like we got the correct value. And now let's add some more numbers. And now let's click run again. And boom, we get 14. So now we can basically build apps and also save the state. Nice. So now let's apply what we learned to the project that we built in lesson 35. So when we add a new item, we should store it to the local storage. So let's do that here. So local storage dot set item and let's put total price and let's put the total price variable. And now let's copy this line and paste it and let's do the same for the cart. So let's do cart and let's do cart here. But now we have one problem. Since local storage can only store strings, we can't store this cart directly because it is a list of objects. And this is where JSON comes in. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation, which is known as a format for storing and transporting data. And you'll be using this a lot in the future, so make sure you understand this concept very well. JSON in a nutshell is basically a dictionary with key value pairs. This dictionary can then be converted to a string so that it can be stored in a database or passed around as data from a server to a client. We can use json.stringify to convert a dictionary or a list to a string. And we can also use json.parse to transform the string back to its original form. So we can convert our cart into a JSON string. All we have to do is json.stringify and then open the parentheses and then put our cart as a parameter. And let's console log this so that you can see what it is. And let's console.log the cart as well so you can see a side-by-side -side comparison of the two. Now let's click run. Let's add an apple for $5 and click add item. And this is what the JSON string looks like and this is what the original cart looks like. The main difference here is that this item object got transformed into a dictionary, where it's basically a key value pair with the name as a key and the price as a key. So the goal of JSON is to store the least amount of information to represent data. 
This helps minimize the storage size, which is important for speeding up loading and receiving data. And we will talk more about this in a future lesson. Now let's copy the JSON stringify and update the cart with the JSON.stringify. And let's get rid of these two lines. Nice. Now when people visit our app, we need to check if there is data in our local storage. So let's scroll up. So we need to update these two variables if the value exists inside our local storage. So here I added a line to get the total price item from our local storage. Now I check if the value is not null. No. I'll parse the value to an integer and then update the total price variable. Now I did the same thing with the cart and I update the cart variable with the value we got back from the storage. However, there is one caveat. When we converted the cart to a JSON string, we lost the item object. So it is our job to convert each object back to an item object. So basically I created a new empty list to hold all of the items. And here we use json.parse to convert the cart value that we got back from the local storage to its original form, which is a list of objects. And then we do a for each loop and we take each item and we turn it to an item object and then we push it onto the cart. Then finally, we assign this new cart variable to the cart. And if you want to be fancy, you can do the same thing in three lines of code. Instead of for each, you can use a map and map in a nutshell basically takes each item inside a list and applies some kind of transformation. In this case, we took an item and turned it into an item object. If this doesn't make sense, don't worry. I will explain this in more detail in the future. Cool, and the last thing we need to do is call refresh UI. So that way our UI reflects the changes that we just made. So now let's click run, add an apple for $5, add the item, and now let's add a banana for $3, and now let's click run again. And boom, just like that, everything is saved. And to handle delete, we just have to update the local storage as well. Instead of copying and pasting code, I created a function called update storage that updates the total price and also updates the cart. Then for the delete button, when it gets a click event, it will call update storage and then it will refresh the UI. And also for the add item function, it will call update storage and then it will call refresh UI. Nice, and as good practice, we should write a comment about the cart storage. This will remind ourselves and anyone else that works on this project that the cart stores a list of item objects. This will save yourself and others headaches in the future. Sweet, and now this app is finished. Feel free to share this with your friends and family. Anyways, we basically wrapped up HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Here are some cool projects that you can try. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next lesson.